we should talk a little bit more about drug use in breastfeeding and what adverse effects there could be. Now, we can calculate how much of the drug the infant is getting, but that doesn't tell us about toxicity. It doesn't tell us what kind of adverse reaction there could be. It doesn't tell us what the clinical reaction will be. And what really matters is whether that exposure is actually associated with any kind of adverse reaction. And in fact, adverse reactions are quite rare. The most common drugs to cause an adverse reaction are going to be opioids and CNS depressants. Because of that increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier in an infant, the closer to the birth, so the more immature the baby, the more likely there is to be an adverse reaction because of that permeability of the blood-brain barrier. There's also sensitivity of different brain regions that's likely responsible as in immature babies. Adverse reactions can occur due to high exposure, either a high dose or high passage into the breast milk, or low clearance. What kind of adverse reactions can we see? Remember that adverse reactions are something that are merely observed and noted. We have no way of knowing if these reactions are actually due to the drug because we lack any randomized controlled trials in this population. Mothers and clinicians may just be more likely to notice or comment on adverse reactions when a woman is taking a drug simply because they expect to see one. This may be particularly true for psychiatric drugs, where stigma against mental health plays a part in whether patients and clinicians feel that the medication is really needed. The most likely types of adverse reactions are CNS effects, such as sedation and lethargy, respiratory depression, apnea, seizures, and tremor. There have also been adverse effects reported on gastrointestinal effects, such as vomiting, diarrhea, and weight loss. And for sure, we know that polypharmacy increases the risk of adverse effects. At least it increases the risk of adverse effects we've observed, because remember, no randomized controlled trials. We also have to think carefully about maternal dosing considerations and what role they might play in adverse effects. So a number of drugs have increased clearance during pregnancy, which means that doses may be increased during the pregnancy. This is particularly true for lamotrigine, which has increased clearance through glucuronidation, and lithium, which has increased clearance due to increased GFR. When doses are not decreased back to pre-pregnancy levels in the postpartum, that may mean that the infant can get a higher than usual exposure to the drug. If the infant was exposed in utero, it's often hard to tell if any er adverse reaction in the immediate postpartum period is due to that in utero exposure or due to breast milk exposure. So all those reports that we have of adverse reactions, we don't really know that those are due to the drugs. So we can only base it on those case reports. We don't have the randomized controlled trials. Key points to this section of the talk. Remember that what really matters is not the infant dose, but the effect on the infant. CNS and GI effects have been observed, but remember, none of these are from randomized controlled trials. They're just people observing effects in the postpartum in a time where they may be more prone to see effects or expect effects because they know the woman is on a drug. Careful monitoring of maternal dose in pregnancy and postpartum is really important to minimize both maternal illness and infant adverse effects. And remember that certain drugs that may need to be increased during pregnancy will have to be brought back down again in the postpartum.